In this video, I'll be bringing you a tour of my favorite Mac apps sorted into different categories. These apps that I use pretty regularly in order to stay focused and organized. Let's start off with the essentials, apps that I install on all Macs. Raycast is by far the most powerful app out there. It's basically Spotlight Search, which by the way is already powerful on itself, but on steroids. It has all the best features of Spotlight Search, and on top of that, it has something called Raycast Extensions. Raycast Extensions allow you to add more functions and features into Raycast. My favorite built-in Raycast extensions are window management, which is basically rectangle and emoji and symbols, which allows me to quickly choose emojis by searching and pressing enter on my keyboard and is a lot faster than the built-in emoji picker, in my opinion. Extensions that I love made by the community that I install from the extension store are ChatGPT, which I can use to quickly communicate with ChatGPT through an open AR API key. And I almost forgot to mention, Raycast also has a clipboard manager built in. It shows me all of the copied items and it even shows a preview of that copied item. So if it's a link, it shows me a website preview. And if it's an image, it shows me an image preview as well as information related to that copied item. Next up is Zen Browse. For over a year, I've been using Arc Browser a lot. But recently, at the time of recording, I've switched over to Zen Browser. Arc Browser is amazing because of vertical tabs, very beautiful user interface design, extensive customizations with Arc Boost, and useful AI features with Arc Max. However, I switched to Zen as it's based on Firefox, has vertical tabs, Apps completely free, open source, and privacy respecting. With Arc, I don't really know how they are making money, but with Zen, it does not make money off of me at all, and it's completely free and open source. Zen, at the time of recording, is still in its alpha stage, and a lot of bugs are still there. The worst thing about Zen right now is that DR unprotected content, for example, movies on Netflix, cannot be played as it does not have a license yet, which is very expensive for a small team like Zen. Other than that, I've been enjoying Zen as it respects my privacy, has Zen mods based on Firefox, completely free and open source. Since Zen does not play DRM protected content, I use Orion browser to watch DRM protected content. I use Orion as it's based on Apple's WebKit and it's a fairly lightweight browser. Moving on to productivity, I use Notion for all my tasks, projects, notes, YouTube videos, and movie watch lists. It is the ultimate tool for productivity. Although I use Notion for my daily tasks and to-dos, when it comes to small tasks that need to be done at a specific time, I use Apple Reminders. I like it because it has a simple and easy to use UI and syncs seamlessly across my Mac. When it comes to a calendar app, I just want a simple and easy to use calendar that gets a job done. For me, I use the built-in calendar app on Mac OS. Now let's talk about development. I've been learning Swift UI since June 2023, so last year or even two years depending on the time of uploading the actual video. And I'm currently building some iOS app. In order to do that, I need Xcode. That's why I install Xcode on every Mac that I use. And Clarity is my terminal app of choice. For a long time, I've been using iShum 2, but I'm so overwhelmed with the amount of features that I don't use, so I switch to a Clarity. I also like how all the settings are configured inside a customization file, a configuration file in a Clarity. Other than that, all of the customizations that I used with item 2, such as ZSH auto suggestion, ZSH auto completion, power level 10k, and many, many more, still works perfectly fine. Even though I mainly focus on iOS development, I still have the free community edition of Python and Sold to run my previous small Python QUR apps and projects. I use an ID like like PyCharm for Python instead of a code editor as with an IDE, I don't need to do anything. Everything is set up for a language, in this case, Python by default. Xcode generates a bunch of derived data files which are needed to run apps reliably when developing. But when the development is over, those files are just piling up on my Mac. I can delete them by digging through the Xcode, but it's quite annoying. However, with Dev Cleaner, all I gotta do is to select the type of the file that I want to delete, and with just a single click, I've saved many gigabytes of Xcode and files on my Mac. The country that I live in, Burma, is dominated by Viber users. Even though I don't like using Viber because it's very slow at sending messages and files and its privacy policy is not good, I still have to use it as my family and my friends use Viber. Being the most downloaded free messaging app on Google Play, it is miles ahead of Viber. Telegram is completely free and open source, and even though it does not support end to end encryption for normal messages, I still prefer this over Viber anytime as it's faster and open source. When hanging out with my friends or playing games with my friends, I use Discord. Even though it's non-privacy respecting, when I play games or join voice chats, I don't care if Discord is collecting my data. It's easy to use and many servers are available, which is what I like. Legcord is a much more lightweight version of Discord with less tracking. I use Signal when I'm sending the most sensitive messages. As Signal, by far the most secure and reliable messaging app out there and on this list, in my opinion. Signal supports Android encryption for all messages by default, supports disappearing messages, and even though it needs 
needs a phone number to sign in, I can hide it in the settings. It's also fast and has a clean UI. That's what I love about Signal. On my Mac, I have a bunch of apps running in the background that have icons on the menu bar. This is a problem on a MacBook like mine as there will be a bunch of ugly icons on the menu bar. And since my MacBook has a notch, the icons are going to be covered by it. With eyes. It allows me to hide it. You can even put icons into an always hidden space, which is what I like. I use Tinker 2 to adjust small settings of Finder, Launchpad, Desktop, Applications, etc. My favorite settings to turn on are disable animation when hiding or showing the dog and disable delay when showing the hidden dog. The default screenshot tool on Mac OS sucks because it is quite hard, I mean very hard, to edit screenshots with annotations, arrows, text, etc. But with Shorter, I've configured it so that it shows this little menu after taking a screenshot and from there I can decide if I want to save the screenshot directly copy to the clipboard or edit it using keyboard shortcuts. Furthermore, the screenshot editor is extremely powerful. I can add arrows, rectangles, circles, blur text, remove text, and many, many more. Moreover, I can even take scrolling screenshots, which is useful for long chats and websites. I like to clean my Mac, including the keyboard, every two weeks in order to be clean. But most of the time, when I rub the keyboard, I just trigger keyboard shortcuts automatically. That's why I use Keyboard Clean to to temporarily disable the keyboard when cleaning it. Even though the default archive utility in Mac OS is powerful, raw files are not supported. That's why I use the unr -hiver, which allows me to extract any zip files including RER files. In my country, turning megabytes of Wi-Fi is considered normal. However, most of the time, the download speeds are quite low. With the Download Manager, it allows me to download large files extremely fast by separating them into different sections. Onyx is the app that I use every Wednesday to clean up leftover junk files across my Mac. This app it allows me to connect my Google Drive with Finder. I've tried many video editors before like Camdasia, DaVinci Resolve and many more, but I keep coming back to Final Cut Pro. I don't really know why, but I keep using it as it's very simple to use and has support for many, many free plugins. Since I have a few plugins from Motion VFX for Final Cut Pro, in order to insult them, I have to use an installer. Sometimes I want to cut video files quickly without losing any quality. Lossless Cut is a huge lifesaver in these type of cases. As the name suggests, Lossless Cut allows me to cut any high quality file, video file, without losing its original quality. Don't judge me, but I use Canva for my designs. It's simple, easy to use, and something that I grew up. For a long time, I've been using Heroic as my main game launcher to play Rocket League. But now, over to Mythic as it has all of my favorite features of Heroic as well as a clean and Mac OS like user interface. It's also free and open source. The default microphone launcher sucks. That's why I use Prism Launcher. It allows me to use different mod packs easily from Mondred or CurseForge, install any mods with auto compatibility check on any instance easily from Mondred and CurseForge, as well as manage instances of Minecraft much better. Although the app does not have a modern UI design, it still makes up for it by having amazing features. Okay, let's rerun this final part. Abo Passwords is my password manager of choice, Zoom, you guys already know, and Tunnelware as my main VPN. Alright, that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tech videos like this. Until then, take care.